All right, so what we're going to talk about next is something called the universal binding curve. It relates fractional saturation uh, to the ratio of ligand concentration to dissociation constant. And the overall, it's called universal because the overall shape of this curve is going to look the same for every single drug or protein ligand interaction. Their KDs might be different, so the ligand concentration of interest might be different, but the shape of this curve is going to look the same. What is today? 12, 2. Okay, so we have KD, um, and just recall that dissociation constant was equal to free protein concentration times free ligand concentration over the complex. Okay. Um, KD can tell us the concentration range, and it's usually two orders of magnitude. Um, the concentration range over which a protein or receptor, whatever it is, um, shifts from being unbound to bound by its ligand. Okay. So when the concentration of ligand is equal to one-tenth the dissociation constant, 0.1 times KD. Remember that fractional saturation is equal to ligand concentration over ligand concentration. Like I said, we went through the proof of this last time, plus dissociation constant. So if you sort of plug this in here, you have 0.1 KD oops, over... Um, 0.1 KD plus KD. This is going to be equal to 0.1 over 1.1. This is going to be equal to 0.09, or about 9% will be bound, okay? Remember that the other way to think of fractional saturation is the bound protein over the total amount. So about 9% of your proteins are bound when you're at a ligand concentration, one-tenth of the dissociation, or the dissociation constant for that particular pair of protein to ligand. And so then, alternatively, if you let the ligand concentration be 10 times the dissociation constant for that particular pair, then you can set up fractional saturation as 10 kD over 10 kD plus kD. This is going to be 10 over 11, or 0 0.91, or about 91% bound. So then if you plot fractional saturation versus the log of ligand concentration divided by KD, you'll get a plot that looks like this. If here's fractional saturation, it goes from 0 to 1, sorry, 0.5, and then at 1, we have L over KD. So we said our dissociation constant was given by the ligand concentration, where fractional saturation is half. What we'll have is a curve that looks something like this. Basically, greater than 10 over here, when the ligand concentration is 10 times greater than KD or more, we consider this to be sort of essentially 
complete binding. And over here, when the ligand concentration is less than one tenth of the dissociation constant, we consider this to be essentially no binding. Like, yes, you know, this was 91 and 9, but we're saying that that concentration, that percent of protein bounds isn't enough to have the downstream effects. And so we call this the universal binding curve. We need to use log because the concentrations of interest generally, like I said, span a couple orders of magnitude. Um, we can use the universal binding curve to optimize concentrations. So if we want to pick a concentration for a drug that will be able to bind essentially all of its target receptor, but we want to make sure it binds none of its off-target receptors, or sort of preventing um, side effects. And again, this tells us sort of the physiological range that we have to be in, okay? That we need physiological ligand concentrations that are right around their KD, about plus or minus 100. Otherwise, you have essentially no binding or essentially total binding. Okay, so two orders of magnitude spanning the KD spans the range from mostly free receptor to mostly bound receptor. Like I said, in order for ligand to have physiological function, it has to be able to dynamically switch between bound and unbound. If it's present at a very high or very low concentration relative to its dissociation constant, it will always be bound or always be unbound respectively. So essentially, either nothing's happening or something's turned on all the time, sort of a cancer-like setup. Um, so physiological concentrations are often very close to KD to allow for maximum functionality. And if you have changes in pH or ions, um, anything that sort of shifts this will have negative downstream consequences. Okay. And so again, this is sort of the, the range of relevant concentrations. I just plotted L over KD on the bottom on the top of this curve, and your graph shows you the log of that if you want, zero, one, two, three. So, again, like I said, the value of sort of looking at, yes. It's, I'm not going to ask you to name anything specific, but it depends on what these two things do. But if you have a transcription factor binding to DNA and it transcribes a gene continuously when it needs to be something that's turned on and off, again, anything turned on. Um, the example we'll talk about um, if we sort of get to it today is continuous activation of ABL kinase, and essentially it leads to leukemia. So the downstream consequences are generally some sort of pathological condition that you now suffer, and who knows what that looks like.